Following our 1000 Days of Patterns video, a lot of people asked us how to improve their rhythm and drum pattern making skills. In our opinion, one of the best ways to do this is rhythm training. Why would I need rhythm training? Well, instead of getting sidetracked by trial and error, this will allow you to focus on getting your ideas from your head into the sequencer. No matter if it's a 16 step sequencer or your door, or even a piece of paper. Of course, this will also help you when transcribing parts, which, as you know, is in itself a great way to make progress. And rhythm isn't only needed for drums, it's also part of every other instrument as well. Happy accidents aside, wouldn't it be great if you instantly knew where to place your steps? Remember that this is just the beginning. Today we're simply taking the first steps. If you're up for it, let us know. Then we'll make more challenging exercises in the future. On a scale of chimpanzee hammering at the drum machine and occasionally getting a semi-interesting idea out of it, to Apex twinning the shit out of a track blindfolded, we're about here. Let's get started. Hello everyone, this is... First, let's establish a few simple basics so we're all on the same page. In a 4-4 time signature, which nearly all modern pop music is written in, each of these steps represents a 16th note. And together, these 16 steps form one bar of music. We already talked about this in our first Drum Machine 101 video. If we activate these four steps, then they are right on the quarter notes of the beat like a metronome or Ringo from the Beatles going 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's the pulse or the beat of the song. Don't confuse beats and steps though. A beat in this case is a quarter note, so it has the duration of four steps, four sixteenth notes. Here the second beat is on step five, for example. So that's what we're going to call them. The one of the beat, the two of the beat, the three of the beat, and the four of the beat. Likewise, there's also a name for those steps right in between. If you want to include the eighth notes in your counting as well, you'd go one and two and three and four and. So, this is the one and, the two and, the three and, and the four and. Enough theory for now. Let's put that into practice. In today's lesson, you will concentrate only on the snare. And no worries, you'll still get the training wheels. There will be a kick on every beat you can hold on to. And no shenanigans like swing or accents. A metronome will count you in before every exercise. Okay, your job is to listen for the snare. And visualize where the snare hits are in relation to the kicks. I'll give you a few seconds to think about it and then reveal the answer. I won't give you the running light of the sequencer though, you'll have to concentrate on what you hear. Well, this is probably the most common drum pattern in popular music kicks on each beat, and a snare on the 2 and 4. If we added some hi-hats on the ends, we'd have the standard 4 on the floor disco rhythm. Okay, that was a bit more interesting. For the first time, the snare hit fell right between two kicks, on the three and. Remember that you can pause the video if you need more time, and also reduce the playback speed to make it easier. It also helps a lot to repeat these exercises.
Whoops, that was one from the later lessons. Sorry, on to the next type of exercise. This exercise will help you to get better at finding errors in your patterns and also verifying whether transcriptions are correct. You'll hear a pattern, but it's not exactly the one you see on the sequencer. Find out where the differences are. You'll hear it once without the running light of the sequencer. If you can already spot the mistake then, awesome, well done, but I will also play it again afterwards with the sequencer to make it a bit easier. Now we'll try it the other way round. I'll program a rhythm, and you have to interpret it. Ah, one step closer to your eternal quest of becoming one with the sequencer. If you're undisturbed and no one's watching, you can clap along. If you don't want to attract any attention, then just tap a finger. Focus on the kick as your guide. Just keep clapping the pattern and see if you got it right. I'll always give you one bar to warm up. Here's a very easy one to catch your breath. No snare this time, but we'll use the like and subscribe buttons instead. Let's try it together. So, what do you think about these lessons? Are they too simple? Too basic? Not really useful in the real world? Well, fun fact, we tricked you! During the very first exercises of this video, you transcribed the first bars of Devo's Big Mess. Check out our Patreon. It's a great resource if you want more drum pattern examples to practice with. And leave us a comment if you want more lessons in the future. 